All right, in today's video, we're going to be going over how to make beats for Drake's new album. Let's get into it. All right, so let's hear the full beat first. All right, so this is the rendered out version of the melody. We're gonna go over every part of that. There is kind of a lot to this beat, but then again, not a lot. The creation of the melody wasn't crazy, but everything to get it to sound like this, you know, it's just a lot of processing. So let's go into the original right here because you're gonna hear that it sounds way different. So I'm gonna go ahead, put this in pattern mode and play this. So you can see that sounds a lot different. We're in a different key, it's not reversed, and it kind of doesn't sound like this, right? But I'm gonna show you how I went about doing this. So first I start off with keys. This is Keyscape, and I just created a chord progression in D minor. So you'll see this is pretty much just seventh chords. The root notes are brought down. So actually what I'm gonna do is duplicate this over here so we can easily break this down. So let me just move it right here so we can see what's going on. So if we go ahead and bring these up, you'll see that it gets a little confusing right here, but all I did was invert this. So if I bring this back, this is the basic chord progression. And you will see that there is one note that is outside of the scale, which is this C sharp. So what ended up happening was I sharpened this note. If it's in key, it's at C, but I sharpened it. It gave it more of a jazzy R&B feel to it. So I'll explain that in a second. But now let's go ahead and hear what the chord progression sounds like. So you see, we started on the root note, which is the one of the D minor scale. We skip every other note to build the chord and we have a seventh chord here. Then I went ahead and went up to F, skipped every other note, and we built out another seventh chord here. How you know if it's a seventh chord is because we have the root. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we go over here to the F, we do the same thing. Then it drops down to A sharp, another seventh chord. And then over here, we drop in to A, but you see, like I said, I sharpened the C. So it was supposed to look like this. And instead I sharpened it. So now let's go ahead and hear the chord progression. So then from here, all I did was take the root notes and I brought them down one octave. I held control and shift to select them all like that and then control down arrow. And then I took this E and I inverted it down and that creates a cluster note if that F is there. But since the F is down one octave and then we inverted this, so pretty much we inverted the highest note and the lowest note. And then that gives us the chord progression that you see over here. So like I said, nothing too crazy to that. After that, that got layered with a pad right here from Omnisphere. So I'm gonna show you the pad real quick. So it's this pad inside Omnisphere and that gets layered and sounds like this. Then we have a sub. I used the sub in the last video as well. I ended up using it again because I really like how it sounded. So I'll show you that. It's this sub it has like a really nice top layer pad to it, which sounds really good. So let me go ahead and solo that. And that's just following the root notes. So you hear that pad on top of it, plus the sub really helps out. So once I had this down, I knew if I reversed it, it would sound really good and then pitching it down as well, which is what we're gonna do later on. And then after that, I have one last thing, which is an arcade vocal. And here's the phrase that I used. You see we're in D minor. And then all that is is one note that plays right here. So that added in. And that sounded good. It sounded real R&B to me and I really liked it. But from here, what I wanted to do was actually reverse it. So what I like to do for this is take everything here and reverse it first. And I left the vocal, which ended up sounding really good. So what I do is control A and then alt Y. And what that's gonna do is flip it. So by doing this it, in reverse, it's still gonna play the chords in the same order. So alt Y again. And then we have to do the same thing to the sub. But for the vocal, I left it. Um, I'm not sure. I actually think I took the vocal out of the render. Yeah, so the vocal that gets rendered is right here. I rendered it separately. And the reason I did that is I didn't want to have it 
inside of the sample at all times. So I went ahead and rendered it itself and then reversed it. And then we add these ones, which I'll explain in a second. So from here, what you can do, let's say we wanted to do exactly what I did. Let me go ahead and mute the vocal and we could take this original pattern unless you break it down. But just to show you what I did to create this, let's go over here and let's go ahead. We have them switched and we could just render this out real quick. So I'm gonna do it quick. I'm gonna go Control Alt C. So now if we play it, you're gonna hear it sounds really weird. Not what we wanted. When we hit reverse, now it's gonna play it in the order that we had it, but reversed. And that's already given us that Drake feeling that we wanted to go for it. So from here, I took the pitch and I went down by three semitones. And now we have this. So I thought that sounded really good and I already knew that that was exactly what I wanted to do for the beat. So I'm going to delete this real quick since we already went over it. So now we could see that was pretty much rendered out. I did do like a long form of it and then I ended up taking out the piano and leaving the chords in some spots. So this is kind of just a chop up of it and I went ahead and labeled it so you can kind of see the arrangement. You could take these over here like this and kind of arrange them, let's say, however you wanted to, right? We can have it go here. Let me make this a little bit better. And I just really arranged like a really long sample. And then I took out like the keys here and you could take out the pad there. And then at rendering it and flipping it the same exact way I did. And then for that vocal, same thing. I went over here and then I could just select it and render that out. So I have it on its own. And then that got reversed, the same thing and dropped down by three semitones. And then layered on top sounds like this. So by having it not inside of the actual render of the sample, it made it easier to be able to kind of place it where I wanted it to be because I didn't want it on the hook. I definitely wanted it on the verse. So then we get to the hook section and you hear this vocal right here. So this is another instance of arcade. Let's go in here. Now the key has changed since I went down by three. So we're in B minor. I found this and laid this vocal on top of it. And then I rendered the vocal on its own so I can transpose it instead of duplicating Arcade. And this is vocal low, but I think I ended up going up a whole octave instead. So again, just rendered this one out and then pitched it up an octave. And then we get this part and I'll let this play out into the verse section. So this immediately was like, yeah, this is perfect. I got to make a video for this and break it down because I was making this beat the other day. So from here, what I did after that was real simple drums, like super simple drums. If I go ahead and solo them, you'll hear I didn't want to go too crazy with them. So I kept it simple, had the 808 follow, and this is what the drums sound like. So the 808 just follows the new root notes, which are gonna be in B minor. So exactly what the chord progression was, copied it over and I brought them down three semitones. So one thing I really like to do for these type of beats is kind of delay some of the notes. So you see in the sample, you know, it was very on, everything was one bar like this, right? But what I end up doing for these is usually taking the second note and delaying it. So if we're in, what are we in cell right here? What I do is just take it over two of the little squares, you could say, and kind of start it late on the second bar here and then on the fourth bar here. So I like to do that and it kind of adds a little bit more swing. So with that, let's get into the rest of the drums. Super simple, the hi-hat's just a quick little two-step hi-hat. But what I did is every other note, I brought the velocity down a lot. And a simple way to do that, you could start off with, let's just say four notes right here, right? 
and I take this one, I go down here, down here, and then I change this one a little bit. And then as long as nothing's selected, we could take these and control B over like that. And that creates like a nice little swing like this. And then we can go get the rim. Rim is super simple, kind of self-explanatory. You'll hear it. Make these notes a little bigger so you can see them. Kick is pretty simple too. Like I said, I went super simple on the drums. And that was the whole beat. It ended up just coming out really nice. And just to break down the mix real quick, the melody has an EQ on it, cutting out a lot of that sub. Like I said, I like to use subs sometimes for just for textures and I ended up cutting it out. I mentioned that in my last video. Cut out a little bit of the low mids and then brought the high end out a little bit. I was gonna actually bring a lot of the high end out, but I ended up liking it, so I kept it. And then we have a doubler on it and then a reverb. Next is this vocal. Let's hear it without any processing. It <laughs> sounds terrible, right? There's an EQ cutting out a lot of the high end, a lot of the low end. Then we have a big reverb, S1 to widen it out, and then H delay, which probably should have went before S1, but I don't know why I did it that way. So you'll hear with the processing, it sounds a lot better. Let's hear it before again. And let's actually bring the melody in. And then process it. It doesn't ever sound like it would be, you know, this vocal. That just sounds really bad. But when you do processing, it can help out a lot. And then we have another vocal over here. This one right here. This should, you know, should be pitched up higher because it's not. I didn't bring it down. I ended up bringing it down lower earlier, but I brought it back up. And this without processing sounds like this. And then with processing. Kind of has the same thing going on. We have an EQ cutting out lows and highs, kind of keeping it just that low, mid, mid range. And then a nice reverb on it. H delay doing a ping pong quarter note delay. And I think that's it. Let me check real quick. Oh yeah, we have the last one over here, this reverse one. And let's see what's on here. Let's take this off. Right, there's a lot of mid-range to it, so I cut a lot of that out, kind of just kept the higher mids, a little bit of the highs, and then it has a reverb on it. So that's kind of how I would make a beat for Certified Lover Boy, at least one of the styles of them. Let's hear the full beat again. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this video, leave a thumbs up. You guys can follow me on all social medias at Lifestyle Did It. Make sure to hit my site, lifestyledidit.com for everything else. Other than that, subscribe to your boy. Push notifications. Thanks.